Happy Monday, everybody. Andy and Corbin from wagertalk.com. Welcome to the Road to Millions on November 20th. We've got a jam-packed show, and we've added something really amazing at the end of the show that just happened last night. So this is uh, something that I think is going to be really helpful for everybody. It's a kind of a polarizing talking point, and it stemmed from somebody who was nice enough to talk about it uh, with us on Twitter. So we're going to give you two Monday Night Football best bets we're going to go over some NBA and NHL props. We've got the sneaky play of the day. We've got the stat of the day. And Corbin and I are going to do what we were calling the parlay workshop. So do you want to tease everyone on this, Corbin, and tell everyone why we decided to do this today? Yeah. So long story short, uh, we play quite a lot of parlays, I feel like. Probably more than quite a few people. But there's different ways to play parlays. It's not just throwing a couple of random things together and hoping something sticks there's method behind it what to use what not to use the different types of sports uh all kind of stemmed as you said from uh me having a couple of uh tweets with someone us m- mentioning what he did with parlays and some of the successes and not successes with them so yeah we'll go through that towards the end of the show it's important because parlays have this stigma about them that they're just, you know, they're Hail Marys. Um, I mean, the company work for wagertalk.com literally has a shirt that you can buy that says parlays are for losers. So I need that is, shirt. This is, what we're, <laughs> this is what we're up against here when we do them. But we're like over 50 units for the year in parlays. And I always tell people, it's not <laughs> that you parlay. It's what you parlay. Exactly. So, there, so we use a lot of juicy things. We parlay them together, but there is an absolute method that you have to use. Otherwise, you'll get cooked. So we're going to yeah. go over that at the end of the show. So please stick around. And we're actually going to build a parlay for everyone so you can see how we actually do it. So we'll explain it, and then I'll actually walk through the steps of doing it. So we always want to start the week with some positive vibes from the audience. And I just want to tell everyone, thank you so much for posting your comments yesterday. On yesterday's video, we asked what was more important, um, winning percentage, ROI, return on investment, or units gained. And we just wanted to get a gauge as to what the audience is looking at more when they're looking at handicappers. And Corbin, the consensus is (laughs) there is no consensus, right? (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. So it kind of makes sense. Everyone has their own, like, what they look out for, so... Yeah, um, we we have gotten validation that the percentage thing de- everyone sees as co- as a confidence thing. So mm-hmm. that is an adjustment I've had to make, and it starts today. Um, mm-hmm. So it, I just really want to thank everyone for posting. So, and I think we need to do a better job of talking more about winning percentage, about ROI, and about units because. If you're not getting one consensus thing, that means you need to cover all bases. So we're going to start talking a lot more about ROI because I feel like we never do that. And so we will absolutely do that. So, um, but thank you everybody for commenting. So, and for today's video, if you guys could just please uh, hit the like button and leave us a comment, especially about when we do this parlay workshop, let us know your thoughts on that. Let us know your thoughts for your best bet on Monday night football. So uh, great work, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um, What do we have up? Well, right now we have an NHL best bet that is up. Guys, do not worry about individual plays. They do this special every year for this week, Thanksgiving week, and it's a no-brainer. It's their seven-day pass for $69. You can get it today. It includes all sports, all percentages. There are, are a ton of NBA games. There are a ton of NHL games. You've got Thanksgiving football. You've got the first ever Black Friday football. You've got college football. You've got NFL. There's soccer. There's all kinds of sports. It is an absolute no-brainer. There's no promo code needed. Just go to Andy Lang, wagertalk.com, and get a seven-day pass. It's it's $10 a day, which is just an absolute smoking deal. So get that. We're not doing Half Price Monday anymore because – uh, they just we've learned there that our other promos are just way more successful and way more better. And the feedback is, yeah, we like these where you're doing them at different times during the week where you're doing more seven days and 30 day passes. Like it's pretty clear the feedback from the audience. So we're not doing half price Monday anymore. But today, go get that seven day pass again. No brainer. You get started tonight with NHL plays and any plays that we put in, uh, you're going to be getting those and um uh, what ten and two run? 
last couple Crazy. of days, Corbin, 10 and 2. Much so needed. Much very, needed. Very good. We knew the turnaround was coming, and it's here. So we've got a lot of positivity looking forward for the next couple next uh, couple weeks. So, All right, let's do two NFL best bets. I will preface this by saying Corbin and I are not – we're not feeling 100% on the player props. Right, Corbin? This is a yeah. difficult game. Yeah, uh, we'll get into it in, in a minute, I'm sure. But, yeah, some of the lines, it's it all feels where it should be almost. Hence why when you see our best bets coming up, I've gone for some alt lines, and Andy's obviously not gone for a player prop. So I think the player props are kind of right where they are for the most part. So Yeah, the, the lines are dialed in. I, I couldn't find a one that jumped out that was like, oh, we have to hammer that one. So I'm going to go to the, uh, the oldie but goodie, Eagles, over 20 and a half team total i know it's a i know it's a brutal matchup on the chiefs the chiefs do not allow very many points but this eagles team has gone over in every game except that debacle against the jets where jalen hurts lost his mind and (laughs) and threw uh for multiple interceptions but you look at them and they just they get over this this point total and i gotta tell you corbin i think I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the team that has mastered the tush push gets more points because think of how many drives they extend. It's exactly. With that. And when they get inside the two yard line, it's over. Just give them the touchdown. Like, like, <laughs> so, so like it, it almost feels like they, do, like most teams in the NFL have 10 yards to get a first down. It feels like the Eagles only need eight yards. Because once because yeah. once they get there, they can extend the drive. So I don't think it's a it's a coincidence that this Eagles team just consistently hits this over and over. So I was very happy to see twenty and a half that I don't need to get uh, that I can play it under twenty one. So um, we we use this uh, thought process in college football. We took Northwestern at twenty and a half, and they they got to twenty three. So I love the value at getting under. Uh, uh, t- uh, and I, both teams are rested. But, man, the Eagles, Jalen Hurts needed that bye week. It couldn't have come at a better time. His knee was banged up. I think you're going to see him be a little bit more rejuvenated and fresh. So, Eagles over 20 half team total. That's my best bet. So, Corbin, uh, you're using some alt lines here because, like we said, didn't like a lot of those. And like the one you brought up was a perfect example, Pacheco for tonight. There's no value there. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Pacheco, obviously, we've mentioned so many times the Eagles have a really good, I think they are the best run defense at the minute. So, ordinarily, you'd look at the opposing teams running back and look for an under, but Pacheco only, at, I think it's around 47, 48. It's just such a low total that you, it's already factored in that, that that he's playing the best run defense. So, you're not really gaining any edge or anything it's already kind of factored into the price so uh my play i've gone for a same game parlay of uh, eagles plus 12 and a half they've only lost one game this year and that was uh the game you mentioned to the jets where it all all kind of went wrong and they still only lost by six um the chiefs whilst they've obviously won quite a lot of games they've only covered 12 and a half to two teams the chargers and the bears two pretty awful teams quite honestly eagles are far superior you mentioned coming off the bye week so they've had even longer to game plan and scheme to attack this chiefs team so i think i think the eagles could win outright let alone cover the 12 and a half um so that's the first part then we have uh patrick mahomes under 346 and a half this is one of the ones that i got closest to on a normal line so at an alt line i really love this one he's only gone over this uh, huge total versus the chargers and we've mentioned so many times before the chargers have an awful pass defense he it's a huge number for the weapons he has available if he, if they still had tyreek hill or a good wide receiver one and two I could, I could see him having a big game, but he's thrown to so many inconsistent receivers. You've got like Sky Moore, Rice, like I'm sure a couple of them might sneak over just because someone's surely got to go over, but I can't, I can't pick one. And it's just such a high total with that. Uh, and then we have Gamewell over 10 and a half. I think the Eagles are going to have some success running the ball tonight. He's over in, uh, over this alt line in every game except versus the Commanders. The Chiefs don't have a great rush defense. It's kind of mid to low tier. And I think they're going to use the, the run to try and free up the passing game. Obviously, if they just pass the ball every every time, it's not it, 
the Chiefs just going to defend that easily. So I think it's going to complement the style. Wrap that all up for minus 130 is where I'm looking. So Nice, nice. Yeah, I, don't go crazy on this game tonight. This is a tough one. Uh, I know it's like an exciting game. You're like, oh, I want to bet on the Monday night football <laughs> game, the Eagles and the Chiefs. So, uh, yeah, just be careful. Don't overexpose yourself just because it's an awesome Monday night football game. So those are your two NFL best bets. Um, let's go to the sneaky play of the day. I used this one last week, and this one keeps hitting. Connor McDavid under one and a half points. You're getting great money on this. It's minus 115. He's gone under an eight out of his last nine games. His last six games, he only has three points total. And wow. he's just probably not 100% healthy. And this Oilers team is scoring, but they're not heavily dependent on him. They've got other guys chipping in. So, you know, McDavid can still nurse that injury. He can get teammates involved. You know, there's been game, one of the games he had no points and they scored four goals. So it's a, you know, it's an Oilers team that's, you know, finding a way to get it done even without Connor McDavid. So ask him to get one point seems to be a little bit of a chore these days, but getting two points seems like a lot. So I'm going to go with Connor McDavid under one and a half points. And of course, when I told you that the stat of the day I was going to save for you for the show, I didn't want to tell you because it really is just shocking. So Tommy DeVito has started three games. He's been sacked 20 times in those three, 20 times in three wow. games. So he's, he did come in for relief in one of those other games. He got sacked twice in that one in limited minutes. So that's 22 times he's been sacked for the season, Corbin. He's wow. played 3.2 games, and he's the 12th most sacked quarterback this season. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's, he's that does not been, bode well for his he's health. He's been sacked more than guys that are playing every single game. Wow. He got sacked nine times yesterday. So um, we didn't make we, – we talked about him, but we didn't make the plays official. And gosh dang it, I'm kicking myself. But every sack prop hit in that game, the the, the Giants and Commander, every single sack prop yeah. hit, hit in that one. It's so, definitely one to look out for going forward. I, don't, I can't remember who the Giants have next up, but oh it's definitely one gosh. to look at. I mean, yeah, you're just looking at the opposing team star player to get a sack. And we talked about yesterday, they didn't even have some of those players to have a full sack. It was just a, you need to get yeah, half it was just, a sack. Uh, yeah, it was 0. 0.25, so they only needed half a sack. So. <laughs> Amazing. So Tommy And they De play the Patriots next. So Great, great. I'm sure Belichick will have fun uh, with that <laughs> one. So, yeah, Tommy DeVito, we got to look at taking the opposing team to sack Tommy DeVito. So... Uh, shout out to him. So, all right, let's take a look at some NBA props and NHL props before we get to the parlay workshop here. So we do have a good amount of games, but I gotta be honest, some of these games, uh, they're not, they're not fantastic. So first we'll take a look at NHL. Who's hot. Uh, Kucherov is red hot. So he's gone over this three and a half shots on goal. And a lot of these games, he's getting way over. He's got five and six. So he's playing Boston. Boston's great on goals allowed, but they do allow quite a bit of shots. They're, they're at 30.4. So if you're looking to, to keep riding the Kucherov train, you know, Boston just doesn't allow goals, but you can shoot the puck a lot on them. And it's, only, it's less than minus 140. So I do think that's a pretty good price on that one. Um, uh, Miles Wood, I think you're going to get priced out of this one because it's minus 195. So it's a decent matchup, but uh, you're, once you're getting to minus 195, you need a parlay piece uh, to put with that one. Um, if we want to look at guys who are uh, going pretty bad on their shots on goal, Brandon Montour just come back, so don't d don't pay too much attention on that one. Um, Anthony Duclair, you're going to get priced out of this one as well, minus 195. I will keep taking a look at Sam Bennett. Um, so he finally went over his uh, shots on goal prop. This is a guy that's been hurt this year. Um, I talked about him, that, that he's coming back. I'm not sure he's completely 100%. He finally went over his shots on goal. However, Corbin, when we look at his points, he still doesn't have a point this oh, season. Wow. And it's minus 130 to not have a point. Now. He's playing the Edmonton Oilers who give up goals like <laughs> like we give out parlays. That's just the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um tread lightly on this one. However, I think you're getting a really good price because he's playing Edmonton. Um 
I, I would be a little bit worried just because he did he had four shots on goal, which means, okay, maybe he's getting back into the flow of things. He's getting mm-hmm. a little healthy. But we look at Sam Bennett. Uh, he's a fade or stay away. I'm not ready to try and – I'm not ready to try and buck the trend on that one. So, uh, when we're also looking at points, you know, I like looking at these San Jose Shark players, and I think this is a really, really good time to go against Grandland. Um, Grandland had two points against Florida. Florida does give up goals recently, and that was just the the roof came in on Florida. They just they were I think they gave up like four or five goals in that game. Other than that random game, he has one point. And this is a Vancouver team that does not give up goals. They're fourth best. They only give up a couple a game. And this is a San Jose Sharks that team that just does not play very well. So I think we can go back to some of these San Jose Shark players uh, to not have a point. And you guys know I love playing these players to not have a point. So um, if we want to look at players that are on a pretty good streak, um, of course it's going to be your Boston Bruins, probably the best team in the NHL, if not, you know, Top two, top three. So you've got a couple good ones, but it's nowhere near like the William uh, Nylander who keeps hitting Corbin. It's I, oh, wow. I think he, oh he's he's gonna get to twenty. I think he may be at like nineteen right now. The guy the Jeez. streak just just keeps going. So um, let's go to NBA and Corbin. You have a couple plays you want to keep your eye on here. Uh, you want to talk Bam Adebayo and his assists. Yeah, so uh, I like Bam Adebayo over three and a half assists, I think it is, for tonight. So he's over in his last five. Uh, some of them with four, but if he's going over, I like it. So he's had uh, he had five last time out versus the Bulls, who he plays tonight, four versus the Nets, four versus the Hornets, six versus the Spurs, and four versus the Hawks. He's gone over in the last four head-to-head matchups. I just like this for him. I think... They're part, the Heat like to spread the ball around. Obviously, Tyler Hero's out now. That just means even more minutes and ball possessions for other players with him out. I think they're going to spread it around, and I'll continue to ride the streak of Bam Adebayo over three and a half assists. So. I'll back you up on this one. The Bulls allow 27 assists per game. That's 22nd in the NBA. So this is a team that allows quite a few assists there. So you like Bam Adebayo over his assists. And then yeah. let's jump into points. Uh, I'm, I'm with you on this one. Uh, we're, we're actually going to bring this up in the in uh, the build a parlay. You're looking at Julius Randle on his points, correct? Yes. So I mean, the graph kind of shows it shows shows what I'm seeing. So uh, Randall over twenty and a half uh, points. He's gone over in the last seven. The the Knicks have problems shooting the ball. Besides Randall, like. They're so inconsistent that it ends up coming back to him, whatever they try to do. <laughs> so uh, his last matchups, he's had 21 versus the Hornets, 22 versus the Wizards, 29 versus the Hawks, 25 versus the Celtics, and the 23 versus the Hornets again, 23 versus the Spurs, and the 27 versus the Clippers. So quite a few is actually going quite above this total with some 27s, etc. So I like that. He's also had really good success versus the Timberwolves in previous matchups which is what I quite like to look at. He's had uh, He had 57 in their last head-to-head, huge total. 31 the game before that and 21 before that. So that's three straight over 20 and a half. So that's where I'm looking at for tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about this. Uh, keep your eye on... So our good friends at props.cash have all these great stats. So Minnesota defense, right now they're fifth for the season in points allowed. I will show you why that number is very deceiving. So, um, and this goes into things that you need to look at when building a parlay. So um, I like Julius Randle tonight. uh, Absolutely. So we want to look here at some guys, some other guys who are on fire with their points. Um, So Julius Randle is by far the one that sticks out. Demonta Sabonis, um, I, I, I don't know. There's something about the Pelicans. I don't like being involved in Pelican games, except... Taking Zion Williamson <laughs> under um, his point totals again, I think these are just overinflated numbers on a superstar. He's gone over one time this season, and that was by half a point in his last game to the Denver Nuggets. So he's getting close, but he's just normally not getting there. My worry is that Sacramento, God, their defense is bad. I mean, <laughs> I mean they can give up 120, 130 points if. Like nothing. So I would be a little bit worried about that one. Um, 
Terrence Mann, this one's deceiving uh, because uh, Westbrook is now coming off the bench. So Mann is going to have a little bit of a different role. So I would be careful about uh, about looking at that one. And then um, I'm trying to see if there's any rebound props. Not really. Nothing really that stands out. You're not seeing guys that are absolutely crushing it this year. Um, DeRozan's been a polarizing guy here. Um, I've been doing. DeRozan is hilarious. So let's just take a look at his points here, and let's look at his points at home. He always goes over at home. Um, always goes under away. <laughs> like it's just you. You you can seriously with this guy. Just if he's away. Take his points under because what the books are doing is they're putting his average as the as the total. So he averages twenty one and a half, but he averages because he's going way over at home, and then way under on the road. So you can take you can absolutely take advantage of this. Like this seriously could be a theme that you just take for the rest of the season. Like if they're hanging this twenty one and a half, and if it's a home game, yep, take the bar to Rosen to get over. If it's twenty one and a half and he's away. You just take them to go under. It's kind of one of, it's just a very strange, I don't think I've seen home road splits like this. Uh, They're really, really bizarre in that one. So, um, so other than that, uh, there's a lot of props out there, but those are the only ones that jump off the page. Bam Adebayo, um, Julius Randle, maybe, maybe Zion Williamson, and then DeMar DeRozan when you're looking at the home and the road splits. So, um, anything else in uh, NBA for tonight, Corbin, or those your best looks? They're my two best best looks. So, all right, guys. So we are gonna do the Road to Millions Parlay Workshop. Uh, but first, real quick, make sure you get that seven day pass. I can't emphasize that enough. It's normally ninety nine dollars. You get thirty dollars off instantly. No promo code. It's Thanksgiving special. They do it every year. One of the most successful and popular promos. All sports, all percentages. You get everything for the next seven days. So that's gonna include all of our NBA, all of our NHL all of our NFL and we are coming off a 10 and two run the last couple days and feeling great. So it looks like we've, uh, we've busted out of our little mini slump. So really, really happy with that. Um, Corbin, are you going to have any qual- uh, Euro qualifier soccer plays coming up? So the qualifiers are basically over, I think today or tomorrow, and then it's back to the normal weekend soccer. I normally like to take it slightly easier coming back from internationals. Cause there's some players coming from, all kinds of different parts of the world coming back and playing Premier League or Serie A games on like 24, 48 hours notice. But for sure, there will be plays, soccer plays this weekend. So, Okay. Well, let's get to the Road to Millions Parlay Workshop. This was the first. So <laughs> we just wanted to go over uh, how we build parlays, how we think other people build parlays, and why they have such a kind of a negative – uh, kind of kind of stereotype to them. So there's a big difference between parlays and same game parlays. So Corbin, you want to start and just talk about why we uh, why we use same game parlays and just the differences between using you know parlays on two different teams and then same game parlays that are on like one one particular game. Yeah, so the same game parlays normally complement each other in kind of the plays you go for as well. It's like where you feel like you have a good read on a game and you want to attack it from different spots, i.e. the the Eagles-Chiefs one that I just mentioned is a great example of a same game parlay where I think the lines are all pretty good, but the alt lines I love. So you you basically just, you're taking alt totals of stuff that you like to happen anyway so for example i have like when i do my soccer plays i do a same game parlay i like like i had one with cole palmer that i like to have two and a half shots if i can get him at one and a half shots or to have a shot i just love it even more so you put a couple of those juicier pieces together and it gets you a minus 110 120 kind of play but it gives you the margin for error that a normal play doesn't do so um, and then when we're looking at parlays, like, so for example, I have an NHL play that is up for wager talk. It's, it's just a standard parlay where I use two alt lines. They're in two different games and it's because there's something very specific I think is going to happen in that game, but I don't necessarily think I know how the entire game is going to play out. There's like one thing that I really like in that game. It's a matchup. So if I find that one piece 
that I can take advantage of yet that I got a good line. Now I can look at finding one other piece in another game where I just need one specific thing to happen and I can grab another, you know, good all line. So same game parlays, you have to determine if you think you've got a good read on the entire game. With the regular parlays, you kind of just are looking, can I find one thing in one particular game that I like? So, um, Corbin, you brought up when we use them, and you, like you said, it's it's if you think you got a really, really good read. And I know you do a good job of taking advantage of these in spots where we think there's going to be blowouts, right? Yeah, exactly. The blowout spots, they just protect you as well. So if you like a like uh, the Cowboys game, I was worried about a blowout. You could easily take an alt over and then that could hit in the first half and you don't have to worry about them even playing the second half. You can take alt totals to, to just go over their points, uh, touchdowns, all sorts of stuff. So I think that there's so many other points about when and why to use them it's about getting the right spots you don't force them you don't have hundreds of legs but i'm sure we'll get to that in a minute so <laughs> here we go how many legs <laughs> the very do next you slide in the same game parlay and how many legs do you in a standard parlay i'll let you go first corbin and talk about how many legs to use in a same game parlay yeah i find it it to me it varies on the juice i Traditionally, I like to have two or three max legs in one thing. If it's if it gets to like the minus 180 mark, I might throw an extra fourth just to make it bring down the juice. I think it's all about the juice, but I don't you don't want to go crazy with like to get like seven, eight, nine, ten things right in any kind of sport, even the same game parlay. You need an awful lot to go right. And something so simple could change slightly and it kind of screws your whole parlay by just one minor change so um in a standard parlay what i've been doing for nba and nhl you get two legs that's it two not three not four not five i, I sound like lebron uh, I just went to the heat <laughs> no you get two and that's a rule i put in place for me to make things a lot easier and a lot simple as opposed to saying well if i add this well, if I add this, I just feel like having the structure of knowing that I only get two pieces to put in a parlay. And when we're talking about using parlays in different games, you can predict something to happen in one game. You can predict something to happen in two games. Once you bring that third game in there, now you're saying I'm the best in the planet of, of predicting these, these sports. So when I'm putting a, a standard parlay together, like, for example, the hockey one that I, the NHL I won every day, two legs. We're going to build an NBA parlay, two legs. So that's the max that we use. And what we're doing is we're trying to get this juice below minus 150 or around minus 150. So um, I think I think it depends on the sport as well. It's also the context of what's going on. So uh, another way that I use parlays, the one time I almost break this rule is at tennis majors, when yeah. we have when we have the big players playing against the unknown players that are way outside the rankings. But the key, p key part of that is I only use it really for the first few rounds when they're playing these big different matchups. And you, I might throw three or four, maybe rarely, but five, if they're all like minus 700 plus. And that's only in that one particular spot. I'm not going to start doing that in NBA or NHL. That's, that's where you, that's a recipe for disaster. So it really depends on the sport and the juice and the kind of situation going on at the minute. So, um, alt lines. So what we've done this year, at least uh, for NBA and NHL, focusing on only a couple of categories. There are so many alt lines <laughs> out there that you could just you could spend all day trying to find them. <laughs> and I think when people look at uh, some of our plays, they may just go, oh, all they're doing is just logging in and finding a couple big favorites and that's it. No, we study these hardcore because if you screw up alt lines and you're constantly losing on these minus 350 plays, you're, you're setting yourself up for disaster. But if you do the research and you just focus on a couple of categories, and I'm going to show you what a couple of the categories that I focus on. You can become a master of that category. And when you're only following a couple categories, you're following it so close that you can just wake up and you just know what you're looking for. You're like, oh, I know that person's, you know, does that. I know this team's bad at this. I know this team's great at this. So when you're using alt lines, especially for these daily sports like NBA and NHL, 
eliminate some of these categories and just focus in on a couple and just be dominant in those. For NHL, I focused on team totals. For NBA, I'm focused on assists. So now I don't have to try and be the best at all lines and NBA points and the best in you know, rebounds. I'm just trying to focus on a couple of categories. So I think that's going to make life a lot easier. Um, it gives we, you so much more margin for error as well true. with the alt line. Like they, they always say like Vegas or whatever knows these lines completely because they, they always, it always seems to be within one or two of whatever their total is. How many times do you lose a receiving yards play by a couple of yards or something? So that's what the alt line gives you. It gives you the ability to drop back or forwards to give that margin for error because I, I, for one, hate losing plays by a couple of yards. So, we've we've learned this, like in the in the NBA, using these alt assist lines. Like, yeah, I can't tell you. I, I I could go back and look the amount of times that we've won on the alt line, but it would have lost if you took the regular one. Has been shocking how many times yeah. it's worked out. So you know if you're if you're finding that perfect middle spot, who cares if you're laying minus three hundred if you're putting it in successful parlays and cashing. And in NHL, we're thirteen and six. We're on a seven and one run. Like we're we're I have to look up the number in NBA, but we're profitable. We're well over five hundred. So they're working. So but you have to dial it in and you have to know what parameters you've set for yourself. Corbin, yeah, two other up. parts. Two other parts. Quickly, I will yeah. mention that you you mentioned that you just know instantly. It saves you so much more time, as you say, if you specialize in a category like uh, like uh, a key one. We'll probably get onto it in soccer in a minute. But I wake up and I know instantly in every matchup who who I like to have shots, who I don't like to have shots. I don't need to spend hours going through twenty odd players that are playing to see who's going to have a shot. I just know instantly. And another thing with the alt lines with the margin for error, we say it so many times, how hard is it to go profitable in just normal lines like the minus 110? If you're putting, I, what do you say it is? It's like uh, 57. 57%, you're going to be best in the world. Exactly. And to be able to put three of those together in one play to try and hit plus 800 or whatever it is, it's, so, it's, ju it's just so difficult because, as you said, to, to get three right at normal odds is quite crazy. So Let's talk about the different sports. I want you to talk about soccer and tennis because those are different from NFL, NBA, and NHL. Completely different. You yeah. cannot... Look, at least, at least this is our experience. You cannot apply the same rules of parlays in soccer and tennis than you can to the daily sports of NBA and NHL, and I'll throw in the NFL. So, Corbin, talk about how you found success in soccer and tennis. And when I say success, Corbin's been number one on, or number two on wager talk in both of these sports since we started putting plays in. Like, it's not even a debate whether or not they're successful. They are. So, explain how you look at them, and uh, then we'll go into why they're different from these other sports. Okay, so firstly, as you mentioned, they're, they're completely different in the way I use soccer and tennis lines. Soccer, I like to, I, I look at a matchup where I think one team is going to dominate, hold possession, etc. I like like corner lines, I play them quite, corners and shots are probably the two that I go to mainly in soccer, because if I'm expecting a team to dominate the ball, then the other team are going to struggle to get into the final third and get into corner, like, chance areas so i find a couple of spots where where i like a team to go under their corners normally their alt corners so a team say a teams that uh like two and a half three and a half corners if you can get that four and a half five and a half that's like a corner every like 20 minutes whereas they might some teams might not even get to the opposition's box within 20 minutes let alone towards the corner lines and then you have the shots as well. So I prefer shots to shots on goal. Shots on goal has so much more variance because the keeper has to actually save it. It doesn't matter if it's going on target or completely wide. To have just a normal shot, there's so many of these teams where you get like their free kick taker or their penalty taker or a player that likes to find space outside the box and just shoot, even if it's not a particularly good chance. You put a couple of those together and you can get a great minus 120 play because I the amount of times that I've taken a shots prop and they haven't gone over their normal shots, their shots on goal is crazy. And as well with the corners, 
it protects you on a blowout. It normally protects you in like the last 10, 15 minutes, even if the game gets a bit more spread out. The amount of times a team's gone over, say, one and a half, two and a half corners, but they've still comfortably gone under the four and a half, five and a half, just gives you so much more margin for error in a game I already expect to have a good read on. So that's soccer. And then I might put two same game parlays together at minus 300, put two together. That's normally quite successful. Tennis kind of depends on the tournament. There's certain tennis markets that I just avoid completely. I tend to hate playing the the legs or the individual games market because so there's so much variance. It depends who serves first because that obviously depends if you're winning sets by like two, fr- two or three. The, there's quite a variance in that and the price. So with tennis, I like to play. Normally, it's just straight up money lines on them particularly at major majors are where I have the most success, as I said, taking these big favorites, but you have to be careful. You can't just throw every big favorite in there. There's certain ones where they're coming off like an injury or it's a bad matchup. So you still need to do like the work. You can't just throw every big favorite together and hope for the best. So that's what I like. When we're looking at NBA and NHL, um, I do not have plays every night in these sports. I've focused on quality over quantity, and they're working. I've used a couple of cross-sport parlays using NBA and NHL, so they don't have to be exclusive. Um, If you have one play that you love in the NHL and one play you love in the NBA, you can absolutely put them together in a cross-sport parlay. I'm only looking to do one a night. Like, I have one NHL parlay tonight. That's going to be it. Like, trying to predict one parlay to hit is difficult, but trying to get two of them to hit on like a Monday night in the NHL, you're just asking, you're, you're, you're trying to do too much. There's no need to put a ton of these plays in for these daily sports. NBA is the exact same way. So when I'm looking at NBA, I'm looking at the assist category and I may look at a couple of other things and that's about it. But again, two legs, you don't have to put anything every night. And if you only have one leg that you like in the NBA, you can absolutely go look at NHL and find another leg that you like, and then you got a cross-sport parlay. NFL, so Corbin, you did a really good job of taking two games that, you know, were projected to be blowouts, but the the Cowboys and Panthers went expected. So you had a nice team total and a nice alt spread on the Cowboys. No sweat. But we did the Lions and the Bears. And that was kind of project. It wasn't a big blowout, but you expected the Lions win. And what happened? It was close. And but the alt lines in the same game parlays let you close that margin for error. Exactly. So while it was a close game and the Lions didn't cover, you did. <laughs> your your your, your <laughs> exactly. play did. So, but again, we didn't have a ton of them. We only had one that had you know multiple legs in that. You did a really nice one with um, uh, the Bills game. So, um, but that one only had two legs. Again, we're trying to stick to to just two legs. But in the NFL, there's just some games, like, was there any doubt that the Cowboys were just going to wipe the field with the Panthers? Not for me. It's just what they, it's what they do best. So, but again, we had, what, four plays yesterday in the NFL? Uh, I think we might, did we have four, five? Four I think we five. might have had, yeah. Um, you don't have to have one in every game. And again, you're sticking to you're sticking to just uh, a couple of plays. And what I loved about what you did with um, the the Cowboys and the Lions is you didn't bring that third game in. It was just two no. games. We'll put them together. The Bills game you had uh, same game parlay, so you're only dealing with one game. So you're not trying to take one thing from like five different games in the NFL and try and make it work. You're just trying that- to take a couple things from one game. Yeah, that Bills Jets game is a perfect example of when I like a parlay. So I looked through the slate. I liked uh, Josh Allen to throw an interception, but it's, it was like minus one sixty, minus one seventy. Do I want to lay the juice on that? I was like, what? What else can I put with it that I also like? So obviously, I had already mentioned that I liked the huge totals under because I didn't see both teams scoring, which didn't happen. You you put you add in I think it was like fifty six and a half. It never got close to that total at all, really, and it just allowed you to bring the juice down. So your risk for loss suddenly went from losing 
uh, say, say it's a 1% play, 1.7 units to even if they had lost, we'd only lose like 1.1. Over the course of a year, those make a huge amount of difference where you can save yourself the juice. So, yeah. So the play ended up being Josh Allen to throw an interception parlayed with under 50, what, seven and a half or 56 yeah. and a half. It's a game with Zach Wilson in it. They're not getting to 56 exactly. and a half points. So Allen throws the interception on the Hail Mary, um, you know, which was a, a beautiful bonus and uh, it ends up cashing. So, um, that Josh Allen to throw an interception, he's just getting there every single game. So, um, nice work on that one. So, but even oh. even then, the like I think was it the normal total ended up going. Uh, did it go By one over one and a half point? Exactly. Under, it, well, you're one field goal away from. It, it, yeah, imagine having to sweat that by like like whatever side you're on to lose it by like one or one and a half <laughs> points to me is unbearable. So even if you had liked that side, you could have got a few yards either way, and that just would have protected you so much. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you you also touched on it. The cross sport parlays are a huge asset as well. If you have uh, for F one in particular, like you look at it, you could like find Max Verstappen most weeks at minus three hundred or four hundred. You can't play that on its own, but you could easily take that and put that with your favorite UFC player of the week, your favorite tennis player of the week, and suddenly you have two parts that you really love together to bring you one really good parlay piece. So. All right, let's build an NBA parlay using alt lines. I know we're going a little long, but I think this is important, and there's been a lot of talk about it. We haven't done anything this intricate on parlay. So I'm going to build an NBA parlay using alt lines tonight. So I mentioned that I really focus on the assists and the alt line assists. I, like you said, Corbin, I wake up, I automatically know who I'm looking at. I know who's getting a ton of assists, who's not getting a ton of assists. I know what teams are good against assists and what teams you want to look for. So with the assists, what I'm looking at is you want a guy who's playing a team that's not great on defense. I will not play a guy to go over his assists when they're playing the Boston Celtics. They're too good on defense. So immediately I can get up and eliminate a bunch of teams. Um, I also don't want to play teams that can consistently be involved in blowouts where guys are sitting. I will not be playing Washington Wizards games. They're, they're just, it's too easy to be involved in a blowout. And you look up and the score is like 130 to 90. And your guys played 23 minutes and is like under his assist. So when I go through some of these games, um, the Nuggets at the Pistons, I'm staying away from. Celtics at Hornets, it's a Celtics game. I'm staying away from it. Clippers at Spurs. I'm actually going to come back to this one for something that I noticed. Knicks and Timberwolves. I have been paying close attention to the Knicks because they have two guys who go over their assists. That's Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. I won't go through the list of, uh, I won't go through the entire thing, but I'm telling you right now, Julius Randle has been on a tear on assists. So I can pull up his game log here and we can see what's going on here. So Corbin, you mentioned his points. He's getting it done everywhere. Look at these numbers that he's been putting up. 21, 6, and 8. 22, 7, and 8. 29, 10, and 8. 25, 9, and 5. 23, 5, and 5. He's getting it done a lot, mostly because the rest of his team isn't doing anything. And I watch these games. It is weird. It, the ball just kind of ends up in his hands. Like, they'll pass it, pass, and then all of a sudden, they just it's just there. So he's left to do something with it. So... I'm looking at Julius Randle, and I can take his over three and a half assists at minus 320. I'm happy with that minus 320. Look at this guy's game log. He's averaging 5.7 assists this month. He's gone over in every game except the Clippers, which was a blowout, and eight assists in his last three games. I mean, he's he's flying over this total. So there's a stat that you can look at. Um, when you're doing these assists and because I'm a nerd uh, <laughs> with, with this, it's potential assists. And if you're doing something like assists, you need to know how many times the, is a guy, how many times is a guy passing the ball to somebody that's shooting it or in a shooting position? Like how many attempts and how close is he getting? So this is just a free website. This is just NBA.com. So over his last five games, when I look at potential assists, Julius Randle, is getting 11.2 potential assists per game. 
So per game, he's in a position to get an assist over 11 times, and we only need him to get four assists per game. So I love this ratio. So to me, that's a home run. I mentioned the Minnesota Timberwolves. And we want to look at defense. We will, we don't want to play against teams that are great against defense. So I told you that that stat is a little deceiving. So Corbin, check this out. For the entire season, the Minnesota Timberwolves are third in defensive efficiency. Now let's check the last five games. 18th. Wow. Their defense is falling off. So this is now not... This is now not a great matchup uh, or a bad matchup for assists. In fact, it's trending completely in the opposite direction. They're getting involved in high-scoring games, which means more assists. So this Minnesota Timberwolves team is getting worse, which is why I love watch. I love looking at the last five games stats. That's going to tell you what's happening in the moment. The full season stats can be deceiving. So this Minnesota Timberwolves team, I now think, is a good matchup. So I'm very happy with Julius Randle over three and a half. He's getting it done a lot. He's getting a ton of potential assists, and the Timberwolves are a good matchup now. Uh, The next game that I was going to look at was potentially the Miami Heat at the Chicago Bulls. And I'm looking at Zach Levine over two and a half. So if I already have a minus 320 parlay piece, if I get something at minus 295, now we're down to the minus 133 range. Now we're talking. So um, I want to look at Zach Levine here. And when we look at his assist total, he's been getting over in a lot of these games. He had six just in the last game against Miami. That's great. Because that's what we play. So 6 3, 3 5. He did go under against Detroit. Again, Detroit gets involved in these blowouts. <laughs> so like, there's an 11 point game. Um, 8, 3, 4, and 5. So he's averaging four assists this month, which I love. And when we go back to uh, our potential assists, Zach Levine. So there's DeMar, uh, DeMar DeRozan. Gosh darn it. Where is it? Hold on. Control F. Con- what what the hell is Control F? There it you is. You don't Zach know Levine. that. It's it fine. There we go. Zach Levine. Ten potential assists per game in the last five. Ten. I only need him to get three assists. So he's another guy that is getting a lot of potential assists. And because I follow us, I know DeMar DeRozan goes over his point total at home, which is creating a lot of assists for other guys. So um, I'm loving this Zach Levine. So if we... Follow the assist category as closely as I do. I wake up. I know who I'm looking for. I know what teams we're looking to, uh, to, to go against. And the Miami team, they're 10th in defensive rating the last, like, five games. That's, on, that's, like, right on the border. I don't like to go against the top 10. But if I lower it to four games, they drop down to, like, 12th. So I think it's a pretty decent matchup. So, um there's one way that you can build uh, a, a play that I think is absolutely playable. And I will also say, Corbin, if you can get ahead of a trend that something – if something has changed and the books are slow to adjust, um, I think I can get ahead of it. And there was one massive thing that has changed, and that is James Harden. Russell Westbrook just said, I'll come off the bench. That took away a big that, – that's a big move for the Clippers – Look what happened to James Harden with Russell Westbrook off the floor. He went 24-9-7. and seven. His assists skyrocketed. His rebounds skyrocketed. He had his highest point total of the season. And that was a game against Houston, and Houston is a good defensive team. So something really changed there with the Clippers. He went over his PRA finally. He'd been going under. <laughs> finally. Finally. So if you think you can get ahead of something – if I want to go look at uh, the player combos, the alternate lines, points, rebounds, and assists, I can go down to the Clippers. 25 points, rebounds, and assists. James Harden had 24 points <laughs> in the last game. And who are they playing? They are playing the San Antonio Spurs who couldn't stop you, me, and three of our friends. <laughs> so Harden gets a an unbelievably juicy matchup. We have something that changed. 
which is Russell Westbrook coming off the bench, which means a lot of those stats that James Harden have had are not indicative of what's actually happening right now. So I think there's a lot of value in looking at James Harden on some of these alt uh, lines. And you could go alt assist, you could go alt you know, points or, or something if you think that you know, he's going he's gonna to keep doing this in all categories. But I was really interested in that points, rebounds, and assists. Westbrook goes to the bench, and he puts up 40 PRA. So um, you can look at these alt lines on Harden. So that is how I build a parlay. And to be honest, it doesn't really take that time. Corbin, you brought up a great point. When you wake up and you already know the categories, it, in 20 minutes you can build that parlay, and you've got yourself a winner um, for that night. So that's how we build uh, a parlay. So, All right, anything else to add to parlay workshop there, Corbin? Just emphasizing, I guess, that the, if there's anything you take away, it's just, to me, don't put three, four, five plus legs of minus 110 normal size plays. It's just the chance of you hitting them. You might hit a couple. Sure, you might have a couple of big wins, but long term, you, you just stand no chance. And then the second point you've also mentioned, you don't have to bet every game. You don't have to bet every night. As you said, if you pick a category or you specialize in one kind of area, you can just wake up and go, I don't like this matchup, don't like this matchup. I like this one matchup, but it's not enough to play. That's it. That's your whole process done in 10, 15 minutes instead of trying to purposely find parts in every every game. It's just a recipe for disaster. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Work smarter, not harder. And as you guys know, I've been preaching keeping it simple. And simple is just working. Um, we've <laughs> lowering the volume, and what do you know? Bang, off to a 10 and 2 uh, uh, start. So, um, best bets for tonight Eagles team total over. Corbin likes the same game parlay, but most important, guys, get that seven day pass. Um, it's a smoking deal, and you can start getting our plays today. You can start with that NHL play, and uh, it'll include all the Thanksgiving Day plays, everything through the weekend. So, um, Good luck on all your plays, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. and Leave us a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed the parlay workshop, if it made sense. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. We are here to help. We want everyone to be profitable. So do not hesitate to ask. If you want to reach out to me on Twitter, DM me, that's fine. Or you can just leave it in the comment section. I promise we will get to everybody. So I'll have, in, I'll have time this afternoon to go through any comments. So I love Absolutely. answering parlay questions. So. Absolutely. So thanks, everyone. Hope everyone has a great Monday. Good luck. And we will see everyone tomorrow on the Road to Millions. Good luck.